The only place you can see it was at a convention. I didn't, um, I didn't put it online. It wasn't available anywhere. And as I was putting the concert DVD together, uh, I show Full Metal Fantasy. You look awesome. <laughs> Would love to prosper, my friend. <laughs> I'm sorry, a little uh, distraction there. Yeah, in front of Rome. Anyway, I, uh, I, um, <laughs> see, now I lost my train of thought. You did that to me! <laughs> you made me lose my train of thought. <laughs> um, but, uh, I show, I show Full Metal Fantasy in the concerts. And then I go into the brother's song, you know what I mean? And make it a little Full Metal Fantasy. <laughs> and, uh, and so I thought, you know, maybe it's time after all these years to actually Full Metal Fantasy available to the fans. So it's on the DVD in all of its nerdtastic glory, as well as another bonus feature that I have to tell you about that I I was actually very embarrassed to to share this with people for a long time. Tom, he's there. I love him. <laughs> <laughs> um, sorry, she's like. Ooh, <laughs> all over my bear. Okay. Um, so, okay, long before there was an American Idol, there was Star Search. <laughs> Parents, remember Star Search? All the people in the room? Uh, Star Search was the big American uh, talent competition. And back in 1993, I was a male vocalist challenger on Star Search. Oh yeah. <laughs> 93. I had a mullet. <laughs> I wore a purple double-breasted suit. <laughs> oh yeah, I was hot. <laughs> In my own mind. But anyway, and I like a bolo tie. I mean, it was way 90s and way out there. And, uh, and I sang the song that I wrote. And, um, I didn't win, and I was kind of embarrassed about it, you know what I mean? I was like, oh, I blew it, how embarrassing. So I buried the video. And I was like, no one will ever see this video. <laughs> Except the four million people that saw it when it aired, but apart from that, nobody else. And so, um, so nobody ever saw it. And as I was preparing the concert DVD, a friend of mine said, hey, you know what you should put on as a bonus feature on the concert DVD? You should put your appearance on Star Search. And I'm like, shut up! <laughs> put your appearance on Star <laughs> And uh, so suffice it to say, even though it was kind of humiliating, I thought it would probably be a fun thing for you to see. So I put that on there as well. So in addition to a lot of great music uh, and full metal fantasy, there is my great humiliation of my life on there as well. So uh, I'll have those and a lot of my music CDs that some of you wrote me and asked me if I would be bringing my music CDs. Did anybody go to my concert like six years ago when I was here? Does anybody remember that? Were you there? Thank you. I did a concert, right? Just one on one, right there. One person, I performed for that one person. <laughs> um, I'll have all of those at my autograph session right after this. I'm doing an hour right after this and then I'm doing another session later in the afternoon. Now, you guys probably know I haven't been to Ohio Con in a long time, and I really miss being here. I've been getting emails from people, some of you maybe even, for many, many years asking me, how come you never come back to Ohio Con? Well, I would love to come back uh, anytime they would like to have me. So I was very, very excited when, uh, when they called me uh, just a short while ago, actually, and said, hey, would you like to come back to Ohio Con this year? I was like, yes! Please. Yes. So I'm so glad you guys are here. This this portion of time is one of my favorite times uh, of the whole weekend to just chat with you and talk to you about anything you want to talk about and, and share our mutual interests. So um, having said all that, let me see. What have I not told you about? Um, we don't know. <laughs> I don't know what I don't know. Uh, if you're on Twitter. Please consider yourselves invited to follow me on Twitter if you can figure out how to spell my last name. <laughs> it's a tricky one. It's spelled it makes derp of derp. <laughs> Look it up. And uh, <laughs> D-R-P. 
Um, and, uh, and if you're not uh, a member of the most awesome group on the internet, please consider yourselves personally invited to join the Visible Rangers. Okay? It's a great fan group of about 20,000 people around the planet who love all the things you love. Um, we have great officers in place to kind of make sure that, you know, nobody gets crazy and nothing is, no, no kind of inappropriate uh, stuff happens. So parents know that their kids are safe there. And um, it's really great. We've had people meet and become best friends in the Rangers. We've had people meet their life mate in the Rangers. They've gotten married uh, to somebody that they've met and uh, making, making great friends. And uh, whenever people go to conventions, they immediately find that they have like a family of other Rangers uh, that, that are there and kind of feel like they already know people. So it's really a great group. It's free to join and, uh, and you would find yourself surrounded by lots of love from around the globe. Let me tell you, because I'm sure when we get into the Q&A part, somebody's going to say, um, what are you working on right now? You know what you look like? Do people tell you all the time that you look like um, Amy Palm? No. They don't? You guys know what I'm talking about, right? Stand up, baby. Stand up. Look at this girl. Right? Look! I'm like, who nerding out here? Because she looks like a beautiful poem. Where's your glory? You have a great idea, too. Anyway, I love I'm now a Dr. Who fan. That's a big segue. That, um, I mean, I saw them like, you should be a poem. Oh, my uh, and for many years, people at conventions, you guys would come up to me and say, do you like Doctor Who? And I would say, I'll bet I would. If I had ever seen it, I, I just don't have gotten a chance to watch it. But I always suspected I might like it. And uh, over the Christmas holiday, I started like diving in. And, uh, and just the more I would watch it, the more I just, you know, got hooked. And so uh, I'm totally into it now. And uh, I like, I'm with you, probably a lot of you. I totally think David Tennant is probably the best doctor. Yeah. I know Matt Smith is cute and all. And, he's, and you know what's funny? Can I tell you a funny news story? I was at a convention in London, and I'm standing there talking to Matt Smith. He was a guest too. And we're talking, and I'm like thinking, I know this guy's face, but I can't remember what he does. He's like, nice to meet you, dude. You know, we were, were talking and stuff. And, and, uh, and he looks like he's 12 years old. I swear. He's like this big around and looks like he's about 12. He looks so young. And so um, we chatted and had a great time chatting. And, and um, I think we even talked about how much we both love soccer. We love soccer. And so um, after I started watching the show, and started becoming kind of a fan of it, I'm like, dang, now I want to like do more conventions with Matt and go play soccer with him. <laughs> so I've been known to do that. I don't know if you've ever seen the videos, but I've been known to like, in fact, one of my dear friends, Britt, right here in the front row, we have this tradition where we, whenever we're at a con together, we try to find a ball field that we can go out with a soccer ball and kick a soccer ball. And, uh, and I know that Matt Smith even did it on the show, remember? He always looks, I guarantee you, he like goes to the producers and goes, find some way, some reason for me to be playing with a soccer ball. Because he loves to play soccer. So, um, so yes, I'm a big Dr. Who fan now. Um, what am I working on right now, probably, would be a question that some people want to know. So let me go ahead and tell you. Um, I'm working on the new Digimon series. Uh, I just uh, finished a show called Maji. And oh, so somebody knows what that is. <laughs> One person came by a concert, and two people know what that is. Um, and uh, there's a show called LaGrange. There's a show called Nora. There are a couple of shows that I can't remember their names, but they were cool. <laughs> Some fancy Japanese word I can't pronounce. And um, let's see. Uh, there are a couple of um, a couple of uh, video games that, that I worked on. Uh, there are some other shows coming out that I'm excited to be a part of, but we're not allowed to talk about those yet. You know how that goes. Um, I'm sure you've probably heard that nine times this weekend from somebody. But um, also, uh, how many of you guys have seen Star Trek Continues? What's wrong? 
with the rest of you. <laughs> I want you to go home and I want you to watch Star Trek Continues, look it up online. Uh, just as anime may be, or Doctor Who, may be your particular passion, when I was your age, my passion was Star Trek. The original series of Star Trek. Not Next Gen, not Deep Space Nine, not Voyager, not Enterprise, not blah 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 blah, not J.J. Abrams. The original Captain Kirk, Mr. Spock from yes. the 60s. I loved it. I devoured it. You have no idea what a big nerd I was. You, Captain Kirk. You have no idea. How are you? Perfect. When I was 16, you know what I was doing? I was putting a cassette player. I know, you guys don't even know what that is, but I was putting a cassette player by the television speaker every day at 5 o'clock after school and recording the episodes of Star Trek on an audio cassette. It's this little plastic box that has tape inside. And then, here comes the biggest nerd part, you ready? When I would go to sleep at night, I would put the cassette player under my pillow and lay there listening to the episode. So basically, I indoctrinated myself into the cult of Star Trek. Nobody. I mean, some people listen to positive reinforcement videos, right? You're important. <laughs> You're intelligent. You know, like, you know, feel good about themselves when they wake up in the morning. Not me. I'm listening to Star Trek. And I memorized it, you guys. Like, word for word. I, would, I could hear the music cues and all the sound effects. I'm so into Star Trek. And then I grew up. And I'm still in the Star Trek beyond words. It just lied dormant for a while. That's all that happened. It was like a disease. It kind of drifted, you know, it kind of retreated into the background for a while. And then it came back with a vengeance three times stronger than it ever was. So, um, so because I'm such a nerd, I started the Star Trek web series. And I put lots of money into rebuilding all of the sets. I'm not kidding you. <laughs> rebuilding the entire sound stage from the original series of Star Trek. And I started casting a bunch of friends and really great actors to play all of the different roles. Love your hair. And, um, <laughs> and I get to play, I get to fulfill my childhood dream of playing Captain Kirk. So it's 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 really a lot of fun, and it looks and feels and sounds exactly like the original series of Star Trek. It's like right where the original left off. We continue. Hence the title. Star Trek continues. And watch our episode. It's called Pilgrim of Eternity. It's a sequel to an original series episode. And the, the actor who was the guest star in the episode 47 years ago reprises his role as the guest star in, in our in our premiere episode. So please check it out, because you know what, even if you don't like Star Trek, it'd be fun for you guys to see some voice acting people that you know playing Star Trek together. And also, um, I bet your parents, or your somebody in your family, or your neighbor, or your, or your school teacher, somebody in your circle loves some Star Trek. So tell them about it, okay? Will you do that for me? Is it a deal? Do you have a deal? Yeah. yeah, that's what I'm talking about. That's the way you answer that question. If you only have a limited amount of time, I always love these panels, and I often I even request like an hour and a half. Um, but if there's too many things to schedule, you know, we can't get to spend that much time. So I want to get to questions and talk with you guys about whatever you like, as long as humanly possible. So, you have a question? Um, I, uh, you know what, I've been very, very blessed to get to do the work that I've done. And uh, yeah, there are a lot of them. And you know, can I tell you something I'm really embarrassed to say? At my age, all of those lines start melting together. You know what I mean? I'll, I'll, I'll think of a line and then I'll be like, oh, wait, who said that? Who said, was that Dark Mousy from the Angel or was it Comedy? Or, you know what I mean? Was that? The only one I know who never said anything is Broly from Dragon Ball Z. If it's not Kakarot, he didn't say it. Uh, but, um, you know, there, uh, I, uh, I, I have a lot of favorites. Um, I don't want to take up too much time, uh, just with different lines. Uh, but, you know, the, the neat thing about my characters, some of the more well-known characters, are that they're, 
it's not that they're so much different from even my own voice, as much as they're just, the characters are different. You know what I mean? Uh, the goal for a voice actor, you guys, is not to change his voice with every one. Um, you know what, Janelle? There it goes. <laughs> when I was younger, I, I, I never watched Pokemon, but I knew Pokemon. You know what I mean? Pokemon is like iconic. It's one of those shows that's like a kind of a, what do you call it? You know, a bridge into anime. Because it's on mainstream television, and kids don't even know they're watching anime. They just know they like this cool show called Pokemon, or they like Digimon, or they like Yu-Gi-Oh! Or Beyblades, right? All these shows that kids love, that their kids love, they didn't know where they come from, they just know they're cool. Same thing for me. When I was young, Speed Racer, baby. I didn't know what I was doing today, I just thought it was cool. I'm like, this is really weird and different, but I like it. I was like, this does not sound like Scooby-Doo. <laughs> it doesn't look like Bugs Bunny Road running around, but I like it. So even when I was young, there were shows that were on television that were anime, and I just didn't know they were anime. Well, Pokemon's one of those shows. So, for younger kids. So, when I got the chance to play a character in Pokemon, I was like, this is awesome. So, I went to New York, because Pokemon is recorded in New York. And I went to New York to record. I had no idea what my character looked like, by the way. They just said, uh, here's some lines. They sent me some lines by email. And I said, here, record these lines and send us back your audition. And I did. And they, and they passed me. And I didn't know what Kelly looked like, right? I had no idea. So I go into the studio. And I get inside the, the recording booth. And there's a television, right? And the script, the microphone, is about it. And up on the screen comes... My Little Pony! <laughs> Aren't we recording Pokemon? <laughs> and I quickly realized that Calvio looks like a My Little Pony! <laughs> so what was the first thing Vic does? Vic texts Tara Strong. OMG <laughs> Tara! I'm a My Little Pony now! <laughs> and I took a picture of the screen and I sent it to you. She writes back like, oh, dorms. Like, He's so cute, what's his name? And we have this fun little texting conversation um, about, about Kelly. So yes, I love to be part of Pokemon. And I, you know, I played another character. What was the character? I can't remember. Oh, it was so cute. I played this professor who, had a, who, who found a little alien. Do you guys remember this? Oh, what was it called? El Elgium. Um, he had this cute little alien that he took care of. He found him crashed, and he tried to rebuild his spaceship so he could go home. It was so sweet. I loved it. Yes. What? my favorite legendary. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Janelle. I love you. Don't say short. <laughs> See, I have two questions, and one of them is extremely limited in the number of words. <laughs> <laughs> I see where you're going with this. <laughs> she hates milk, it's disgusting. And you hate being called short? How tall are you? Oh my gosh! You dwarf Ed! <laughs> Ed's 4'11 and a half. Did you know that? Did you guys know that? <laughs> you know, whenever people come up to me, they're like, I'm the same size as Ed. I'm like, no, you're taller. <laughs> you want to hear something funny about, about being 4'11 and a half? When I was how old are you, baby? Okay, 12, oh my god. When I was when I was 12, probably, 11, 12, 13. You know how your parents put little marks on the door, on the on the, the closet doorway or something to show how you're growing? The last time I ever remember a mark on the on the door was when I was 4'11 and a half. Now we're talking a long time ago, you guys, right? So I, that, number, that number was burned in my mind the last time my mom, you know, it's a nostalgic memory, the last time my mom measured me, I was 4'11 and a half. And then somebody says to me, how tall is Ed? And I'm like, I have no idea. And so I put it out there, I think to the Rangers, and several people wrote me back that it's in the manga. It's in like centimeters or something though. And they did the calculations, and guess how tall that is? Four, eleven and a half. Isn't that weird? 
<laughs> so, as far as milk is concerned, drink it anyway. <laughs> it's yummy. Did you put chocolate in it? Really? No. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> chocolate looks awesome. <laughs> so, what is your, your second question? That's really shh. Boom. <laughs> I love that movie. Uh, Come from Shambhala. I mean, Sacred Star Fields was great. It's a great movie. But I loved Come from Shambhala. Um, I've always loved the historical thing. You know, the, the, the going back in time. And, and I love that. But my favorite moment of Come from Shambhala, I'm going to start crying right now. My favorite moment was after they defeated the... The, the robots, the, the creatures, and Ed and Roy are standing, and Al are standing on the wing of that plane, and like for no reason, like there's no talk about it, there's no build up to it, and just goes and, and cuts the wing off, and starts drifting away from Al and and Roy, and he's like, you know, you know. Al, you've got to close the door on the other side, and I need to stay here, you know, whatever it is. I can't remember which one. But, and, and Al starts losing it, right? And Al's like, brother, I just got you back. I can't lose you again. I was sobbing <laughs> in the studio because, you know, when you spend that much time with these characters, and you feel such a connection. And I'm an only child, so I really loved having a little brother for a few years, even if it was kind of vicariously. Um, and I became very close to Aaron because of that. Um, I loved him. He was like the little brother that I, that I wished I had. But in that scene, you know, um, I, I, that really moved me a lot. Um, and what I really remember loving about that scene was when Al says, what about Winry? She's going to miss you too. And I'll never forget what Ed said and said, tell her thanks. She always made the best. And I was sobbing because I always felt like Ed was such a dick to women. <laughs> right? Am I wrong? All through the series, he's like, takes advantage of her, and she like spends all this time building stuff for him, and fixes her, he's like, wait, wait, let's go. You know, he kind of like leaves her behind. He never really seems to appreciate this lovely, sweet, talented, supportive girl that, that clearly cares a lot about him. So in that moment, I'm like, good for you, Ed, you know? <laughs> Let a little bit of what you really feel out, you know? I loved it. So, Kanko Shambhala, yes, one of my things. Yes? Um, I just wanted to know, what was the hardest voice role for you to get into emotionally? Um. You know, there weren't any hard to get involved, to get into emotionally. Um, I mean, just from an acting background, from spending a lot of time acting, um, there weren't any that were terribly challenging emotionally. I would say Ed, but it wasn't that hard because I was so moved by the character and the show and the story already that all I needed to do was just let it out. You know what I mean? I didn't, many times I didn't have to pretend to be really upset. I was really upset. So all I needed to do was let that come out in my performance. In fact, there were some times where people would say, the, the director would say, do you, do you need a minute? I, I, he could tell that I was really moved. Big picture window right here beside me, right? And he's seen me in the booth, and, I would, and he can see me visibly moved. And he would say, do you, do you want to take a minute? I'm like, no, are you kidding? Hell no, let's record right now. Right? Let's get it. Let's record it. Wow, it's visceral and real. So, um, not so hard emotionally. Um, vocally, uh, the two things that stick out to me vocally clearly are Broly from Dragon Ball Z. This is just, it's just painful. It's painful. It really is. Um, you've, if you've heard it, it doesn't sound like this. Uh, and, and you do that for four or five hours, and it's just, it's really, it takes its toll. But the other one was when Ed was a, was a little boy, very young, 
Um, and there was, what, 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 what episode was that? Was it Mother? It was the third, I think the third one. Ed and Al, when they were very little, right? Before their mom died and stuff. And they started playing with alchemy and stuff. Um, the producers looked everywhere to try to find a little boy that sounded like me. <laughs> I mean, they could get away, I mean, you know, Aaron was 12 uh, when, he, when he first started voicing uh, Al. But, you know, I would, they, they wanted somebody, they tried to find a little boy, like six, five, six, seven years old, who sounded, had just kind of a similar timbre to his voice, and he couldn't find anybody. They auditioned tons of kids, little kids in Dallas, where Funimation is. They couldn't find anybody. And so Mike McFarland calls me and he says, okay, we have a challenge here. You have to do it, but you need to sound like you're six years old, or seven years old. And I was thinking, this is impossible. I mean, it's impossible. So when we recorded that, I like did the absolute best I could, pushed it as far as I could, and then even digitally, they pushed it a little bit higher. And another trick you could do, any of you guys that know sound engineering or recording, you EQ the voice, so you roll some of the low end out of the voice so it doesn't resonate this much. Because a little kid in a little body doesn't have a big resonant voice. So you can EQ some of it to make it sound small or tinier as well. But that was a, a physically uh, challenging doing that, the, that episode. You guys, here we go. See, I, I'm killing you now. See, I could, you know what? <laughs> I don't want to be a jerk. I'm, I'm, I'm supposed to go 12 to 1, but we didn't start till 12 15. And part of me wants to go, well then I'm taking my whole time and going to 1 15. But then that would make me a jerk, you know what I mean? <laughs> the people would be like, oh, you, you're a jerk. You just ran over his time and didn't care about anybody. So I don't want anyone to say that, okay? Um, I love you guys. Let me end this last minute that I have by telling you, um, no matter what garbage you may ever read on the internet, I love you guys. I am so profoundly grateful for what I get to do and for the people that I get to meet and the chances that we've got to interact. Um, I have never been unkind to, to any fan ever and I never intend to be. So I, I hope I want to thank you for, for your enthusiasm and for your support of what we do. And we don't get paid a lot of money, so I promise you it means the world to us that you guys enjoy what we do. And I hope I have many, many more years to thank you and let you know how much I appreciate you guys. I love you. I love you. <laughs>